okay hello everyone long time no see today i want to share about of the l spring um, in abacus as we can see in the viewport here is the displacement contour of the l spring and i'll show you the animation of the deformation of the l spring so As we can see, the L spring is first inflated and then it was compressed and at last it was tensioned. And here is the stress. So then let me introduce how to do this model and get this result. Now first of all, because this L spring is plane symmetry model, so I have made half of this structure. And there are three parts in this model. Uh, it looks like here is the rubber cavity and here is the bottom part and the top part and in the property we define the two materials for this model and here is the rubber material and we use the Mooney Rivlin half elastic model and here is the parameters and for the top plate we use steel and we give density and elastic parameters and the unit is millimeter mega power and turns so um, because we are concerned about this rubber cavity so the top and the bottom part will make it as rigid body but because we the part is deformable part so we need to assign material and the section and in the interaction module we make we create a constraint as rigid body. So we need to create the create a, a section for this part and for this plate it is steel of ten millimeters thickness. So we create it as shear section and the thickness is about 10 millimeters the material is steel and for the rubber cavity we give it as a composite material so Here is the orientation angle of the two materials. It has four plates in of the material and the thickness is four millimeters. As we can see. And here is a composite Composite shear assignment, shear section. Um, but we need to assign this section to this part. We just use this composite layup. So in this we 
screen. I'll send this shear composite to this rubber cavity and make it at the right location. Then we need to define the steps here. We need to create three steps as I mentioned. The first step for the inflation, the second step is for the compression, and the three the third step is for the con is for the tension. So for the convergence we need to change the increment size. In the interaction module, we need to create the constraint for this part. And here, we first need to constrain the top plate and the bottom part as rigid body. So we need to create a rigid body as constraint here. And then we need to tie the part. Together. Here is the rigid body for the top plate. And here is the rigid body constraint for the bottom part. And the tie constraint between the rubber cavity and the top plate. Then for this rubber cavity and bottom part, we use the contact. And then, for the rubber cavity, we need to create a fluid cavity to model the inflation. So here, we create a fluid cavity here. To defend the fluid cavity, we need to uh, Select a point in the cavity as the control point and the inner surface of the cavity here. So, <coughs> these are the constraints and interaction of this model. Then we need to go to the node module to define the boundary condition and the node for air spring model. First, we fix, we fix the bottom part as rigid body and we need to create a symmetry and boundary condition for this part because it is half of the whole model. So uh, because this is in Ported as input file, so it has created every constraint for degree uh, freedom. So it has so many, so many bundle conditions, but um, First is fix the bottom part and we select the reference point and we create a symmetry about the plane of XY and we need to define to constrain the uh, other degree of the top plate except the y direction we need to leave it as free and in the first step we need to uh, make the cavity to inflation situation so we need to uh, inflate it to 0 0.5 make pass and uh, so it has a it has a uh, 
the volume changed in the first step. So, in the second step, we need to compress the top plate in the negative y direction for 50 millimeters, as we can see. And in the third step, we need to tension the top plate for 50 millimeters. And this is how we research the um, stiffness of an uh, air spring. So after we have defined all these conditions, we can go to the mesh and get the mesh. And then we can create a job and submit it. Here we have completed the calculation. So I show you the results directly. And you can see because the top and the bottom part is rigid body, so the stress is only displayed on the rubber cavity. So here is the stress contour. As we can see, the cavity is inflated and then compressed and then tensioned. We can also see the displacement of the model. We can also output the uh, volume curve or pressure curve mm -hmm. for the fluid cavity. But here I didn't define this output, but we can mm -hmm. check the reaction force and displacement curve for the flip top. And I have extracted the reaction force and I show it here. Make Create a new viewport and make it parallel. So, in the first step, first viewport, we can see the counter, and in the second viewport, we can see the code. So, here is the reaction force for the model. During the first step, because the uh, inflation inside the rubber cavity, uh, it has compression on the plate or the bottom part, so the reaction force is increasing. And then, in this point, for the second step, it was compressed down in the y direction, so the reaction force keep increasing. And then for the third step, it was tensioned, so the reaction force decreased. And we can also see the displacement curve here. So the first step, it was fixed, so it didn't have displacement zero, and then it was compressed for 50 millimeters in the negative y direction, and then it was tensioned to 50 millimeter in the positive y direction. So this is the displacement curve, and here is the reaction force curve. But we can imagine 
the curve after we combine these two planes, these two curves, um, because in the first step, the displacement is stay at zero, and I create the combined curve. So the displacement as the x axis and the reaction force as longer term axis. So here is the reaction force as the displacement change. In the, at the time of zero, the reaction force is increased and the displacement is stay at zero and then in the second step the displacement in the negative y direction and the reaction force increased and then in the third step the displacement changed to positive y direction and the reaction force decreased until here. So we can see the animation of and here I show you the reaction force. And we combine this together. So this is the whole model creation. Thank you for watching. If you are interested in Arbitrary CAE, please subscribe my channel. And thank you.